you all having a great day today. Just looking uh, inside the garage. We got so much to do. What I did was took all the stuff that we had in storage, took it out and brought it home. And it was actually worse than this, believe it or not. I got a lot of stuff that I want to go through. One of the things is my album collection that I'm actually starting. I love records. And so I want to start making an album collection, even with these old Victorias. You know, that's not a Victoria. That's Bootsy. Then we got Count Basie and his orchestra. Huh. I got some Diana Ross. favorite records that he did back in the day was Wide Receiver. Old school, my group I grew up on from my hometown, Switch. It's Philip Ingram, Bobby DeBarge, Thomas DeBarge, Greg, or yeah, Greg Williams, Eddie Fuel, and Jody Sims. Everybody knows this album. I Call Your Name. Good album. If you were born back in the 80s, you remember this one. Lisa Lisa and Cold Jam. Damn, look at the edge of it. Got some staple singers going there. Speaking of Philip Ingram, this is brother James Ingram. He's always been a solo artist. Who can forget Ray Parker Jr. and radio. And you can't change that. No, no. Of course, I got some good old Roger. I love me some Roger and Zap. I wonder why. Got Switch's first album right here. Got some cameo going. Nice in the sound table. Got some One Way also. This is the album. I believe this one has uh, Mr. Groove on it. Yep. Mr. Groove. This is a 12 inch album of the Gap Band. They did a song called Shake Your Leg, um, dub version. Um, didn't really sell well, but it was a good dance tune. And got the Isley Brothers, of course, Winner Takes All. Came out back when I was like, I'm gonna say 15, 16 years old. Got the Imperials also. Uh, you don't know who the Imperials are. They were a white gospel group back in the early 70s. We got Andre Simone. If you don't know who Andre Simone is, he was actually one of the original background vocalists for Prince. Uh, back before he started the revolution. Actually, it was probably around the time he had the revolution. But uh, he was one of the artists uh, that was with him back in that time. I think it was around after Prince did the 1999 album that Andre Simone left him and uh, decided to go solo. And I got Gregory Abbott. I know you remember this one. This is the album he did with uh, Shake You Down. He did another album, um, but it didn't really go that far, not as far as this one, but uh, that's his very first album. And I got the Zap 3 album. 
this is actually besides the first album that they did and the second album this one was actually the one that really put them on the chart uh, when they came out with Heartbreaker actually um, yeah they came out with Heartbreaker and uh, I Can Make You Dance and uh, this was the one that actually put them on the map so a lot of people thought it was even though they did more bounce to the ounce and it made his name out there um, and then he did a second album both of them which was still considered commercial it was the third album that they did that actually put them out there uh, because a lot of people back in that time period thought that they were just gonna be a gimmick because you know Roger would always use the talk box so everything that he did was based on the talk box and so they basically thought that Roger was going to be nothing but a gimmick. But when he came out with this uh, Zap 3 album, that really stapled his name out there. So speaking of Roger Troutman, I want to go back on him again. Uh, Roger was one of those artists that didn't get the publicity that he should have got. And he worked with so many people in the music industry, uh, from Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, even N.W.A., uh, to even Shaquille O'Neal and a young lady named Smooth in Florida uh, when she did a song called Strawberries. If you had never heard of it, uh, look it up here on YouTube. They used the sample of Computer Love. Um, Computer Love is actually one of the most sampled songs back in the day. Even now, it's being sampled again. And just recently, I want to say as far back as maybe four years ago, uh, when Lil' Kim redid it with... Uh, her song called Download with T-Pain and uh, Uncle Charlie. Uh, but Roger was so ahead of his time with his music and it's because of Roger that music in general is where it is today because Roger kicked it up a notch. And uh, if you listen to some of his old stuff and just go even here on YouTube, you will find out that Roger was so ahead of himself that if you listen to his stuff today, it still sounds like he just made it recently, even with the synthesizers and his talk box, which now people are basically using the auto tone. And, you know, it took a real talent to use a talk box. And that's why Roger was known as the master of the talk box. But, you know, to prove another point that Roger was ahead of his time, he did a song back in 85 called Computer Love. And he was basically talking about computer dating. In 1985, computer dating wasn't even around yet. And he was already talking about it. And it, it didn't, uh, as a matter of fact, computer dating didn't even really appear until 92. But Roger was talking about it in 85. So that tells you how far advanced Roger was. Even with the talk box, he's worked with so many people. Uh, Stevie Wonder, on down the list, you know. And uh, that's one of the influence that Roger had um, on the, the talk box. He heard Stevie Wonder using it one day and was like, wow, I got to try that out. And he tried it out and it's been embedded to him ever since. Now, a lot of people always thought that that was going to be a gimmick. But uh, it wasn't a gimmick at all. It worked for Roger. And uh, even Roger used his own voice from time to time. If you listen to Spend My Whole Life With You uh, that he did on the Zap 3 album, you would hear Roger's own voice. Even on the I Want to Be Your Man, uh, which was his real staple song that made him a household name. Um, he used his real voice along with the talk box. But I think his best stuff really came when he did the Bridge in the Gap album that got no publicity whatsoever. Um, he did, uh, besides uh, Everybody Get Up, he did a song called um, Take Me Back, you know, uh, which is a nice slow groove and emotions, you know. But uh, he's also known for jazz because every time Roger would do an album, he would always have at least one jazz cut on an album and one blues cut because that's how Roger, Roger was which is why he even named the album back in 87 Unlimited because he wanted to show people that he was unlimited to anything. He can do anything, you know. So it's just unfortunate that he got the publicity that it got, which was very low. And a few rappers did give him a shout out, which was Ice Cube and uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Uh, they did a tribute album to him called More Bounce, uh, which was spearheaded by 
rule of the licks and um, you know a bunch of artists on that but unfortunately I think personally the only person that really comes close to being and sounding like Roger is his nephew Rufus Troutman III so if you even go on YouTube and look up his album No Compromise you will hear Roger all over again only on a gospel version because Rufus is gospel but he used to talk box and he just follows the steps of his own you know so just my little take on Roger Troutman and that he should have got the publicity that way above I mean don't forget if you listen to California Love by Tupac uh, that's Roger on the talk box in the beginning of that he's also in the video Roger also helped co-vote he co-wrote three of the songs on that album um, How Do You Want It of course California Love and Thug Passion those are songs that Roger co-wrote with Tupac you know so and I'm just talking music wise you know so just something for you to listen to and I'm quite sure that Roger had did many other songs but unfortunately the family has not put them out and I think if they was to put them out now um Ooh, Roger's name will be back up there again. There'll never be another Roger Troutman. Other than Rufus, that's the closest to it. I mean, there's a guy that named uh, Mr. Talkbox. Uh, he's another one that comes close to being like Roger. But Roger was one in a million. I've met him uh, many times, had a chance to be around him, and uh, it was worth it, you know. So just to give you a heads up, you know, check it out on YouTube, uh, check out Roger, listen to his, uh, especially the Bridging the Gap album, and then tell me what you think in the comments below. Uh, it was just, it didn't get the publicity it should have got, but I thought it was a great album. That's just my opinion. I love you. Yeah, nowhere to run, huh, kitten? And that's Super Stealer, my son Cody. I forgot to add that uh, there was other artists that used to talk box also, such as Peter Frampton, Joel Walsh, um, even uh, Bon Jovi. Uh, I can't think of his name, uh, the singer that used it, uh, uh, but Bon Jovi, but Roger was the master of the talk box and uh, nobody could do a talk box so I didn't mean to miss out on Peter Frampton and Joe Walsh because I listened to them too but Roger was the master so he Roger didn't only use guitar when he first started using the talk box he did but then he realized that he could use keyboard and uh, so he basically stayed with using the keyboard and so what can I say well, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, like and subscribe uh, if you haven't. And don't forget to turn on that notifications just in case I may have more. Uh, and also let me know in the comments what you think. Go back and listen to some of Roger's stuff. And then tell me what you think in the comments below. I want to give a huge shout out to the Zap Band because they're still performing. They just came back from Tokyo. So a huge uh, shout out to them. And... Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to you for watching my video. Uh, let me know who you are and I'll give you a shout out. Uh, Till next time, God bless you, love you, peace.